As you can see, we're in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel line, and he's just gonna beat me by six thousandths of a second. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome back to another race analysis. This is from round two of the 2022 Cal Speed Sprint Series, following my first victory in round one. Now entering this race, there was a lot of pressure on me as I was the last race winner, and to be honest, not many people really expected that. However, my goal, like I said this year, is to win the championship, so I knew for round two, we had to follow that up with a good result. In qualifying, I had a decent cart, and getting a slipstream off my good friend Emerson, ended up qualifying P4, my best qualifying ever. So that for my heat race, that started me P2 next to Jacob Reese. I ended up beating him off the line and dominating that heat race to finish by over four seconds. So now let's move to the final where we had quite an exciting race. All right, so here we are on the grid for the final. Got Spencer Russell taking photos where he actually got this amazing shot of me, as you can see. One of the great parts about this race, because it's a winter race, is the final is obviously later in the day and the sun sets earlier. So we have this amazing sunset. So the footage and lighting from this race was just absolutely incredible. I'm starting on pole for the first time and I was a little nervous because I've never started on a final from pole, but I also knew that was a good thing because obviously I don't have anyone to pass off the start. So I was actually pretty excited and once the race actually ended up going, it was actually pretty calm and I felt very confident obviously starting on pole. I have a lot less work to do and you just gotta make to the line and you win the race. That's how motor racing is. You cross the line first, you win. All right, so here's the flagger. We're looking, waiting, waiting, waiting. Boom, there we go, off the line. We get past Jeremy Aldridge, which is good. He finished P3 in the last race, so I know, very good driver, similar to me on pace, so we gotta get by him, which we do. So at this point, we're into the lead, and I'm just thinking, all right, let's control the race, let them battle their way behind, and let's pull away. The one thing with the cart I had was it cornered great on power, not necessarily as good as some of the other carts, so I knew I had to make sure I prioritized every single exit and got the most of the straight line speed I had available to me. Behind me, I got Mike Gonzalez, very good driver as well, looking for any potential moves. Tries to send one up in the Classico hairpin, but again, I'm gonna have the inside on Silk here. He's not gonna end up getting by. Getting a nice push behind from cart 21 is gonna help us get by Mike Gonzalez. So we come up to the Contino turn. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, there's people pushing on me, so I really gotta make sure I drive as efficiently as possible. And you can see 21 looking for a move, but again, not quite gonna make it stick but Mike Gonzalez is on me and boom, there's Ivan Martinez, which the last race he finished second. And as you'll see this whole race, it's again about me and Ivan Martinez. So at this point we've got a decent gap, but it's really nothing large. So at this point I'm thinking, all right, we survived lap one, we got nine laps to go. Let's just keep pushing. But as you can see, Ivan Martinez just has a lot of straight line speed compared to me. I just cannot compete with that. So he sends it up the inside at terminal. I give him plenty of room because I know he's quicker than me. So at this point I'm thinking, let's just follow him to the line and I could pass him on the last lap and win again. So obviously I know Ivan's a clean driver and he's very fair to me on track. So I know, okay, this is a perfect guy to be following and we can just pull away together. And that's the goal. But as you can see behind me, there's Emerson. Emerson, another driver, good friends with. So I'm thinking, okay, it'll be the three of us. And it turns out that's how it's gonna be. So at this point, I'm just making sure I hit every apex perfectly maximize every exit and just get the most out of this cart because I know on pace it's just not quite as good compared to the others. So we can see here Emerson's just pushing on me which is kind of perfect what we want here. So you can see there's already a gap forming for the guys behind which is great which means the front three of us we can all pull away from the pack which is exactly what we want in this situation. Emerson's going to look for a move into Long Beach, ends up not making the move as so he just doesn't quite have the pace under braking. So again next straightaway Emerson looks for a move here Going to actually pull back and not go with it. Get a nice view of that sunset again. But he's right on me. At this point, I'm knowing if he's going to make a pass on me, I'll let him have it. Now, coming up to turn four, he's actually going to get the move done. But you'll see why this happened. So coming up the front straightaway here, Ivan's probably got about a half a second gap to me, which is plenty. But as you can see, he gets a little bit of oversteer through turn one. I start to catch him in two. I bump him in three. And I actually lift here. Now, the reason I lift here is had I stayed flat out and passed him, I probably would have had a penalty for passing under contact. Now again, when you're racing, you don't know if you're gonna have a penalty, but you never wanna risk it. Because if you get a drive-through penalty, you're losing 15 or so spots. If you give up one position, well, you're only giving up one position. So again, if we take a look at Ivan, he carries a lot of speed through turn one, oversteers, misses the apex completely, really slow for two and three, and Emerson is just able to take advantage. All right, so now we are on board with Emerson, and we're gonna see his view of how he got by me in this incident with Ivan. So as you can see, he's got more straight line speed than me, but he's not gonna make the move into turn one. I'll jump over the curb at turn one. Ivan's gonna be slow, make the contact. Emerson's gonna cut to the inside, tuck in behind Ivan, 
and boom, he's got the move. I'm not, still not worried at this point because I know the two of them are quick and if I can just follow them and pull away from the guys behind, I'm gonna be fine for this race. Because again, I can just get them at the end when they start to battle. But unfortunately, as you can see here at the hairpin, Mike Gonzalez is right on me and the rest of the pack, they're not far away either. So I know that I don't really have the pace to pull away. Mike Gonzalez is gonna look for a move. We're gonna go wheel to wheel coming up to Contino. Again, he's just not quite gonna have the speed. So I wanna be able to start to pull away. But as you can see, he's right on me. He's looking for a move. So I have to be very smart with my defensive moves because obviously I don't wanna lose Emerson and Ivan. As you can see, they've already pulled about a one second gap on me. But look, they're going wheel to wheel. It's just good for me because I can start to catch them. So as you can see now, Mike Gonzalez is still near me, but again, he's not quite close enough to make some passes, which is a good thing, which means I can start to pull away from the pack behind. However, at this point, my focus is entirely on Emerson and Ivan. So I know I have to be able to stick with them if I want any chance of winning this race. And they just need to pull farther and farther ahead. But as you can see, there's certain corners where they're slower than me and I start to catch them. Problem is because my car is slow in the straightaways, making overtakes can be very difficult. So I can't just be risking it and going constantly wheel to wheel. I have to be very smart about my move. And when I make it, I have to make it stick. So as you can see here, Mike Gonzalez is gonna look for a move into the horseshoe. Not quite gonna make it stick as I force him up on that curb. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, the field isn't entirely passing me, so the cart's not that bad, but I just don't quite have the pace to catch Emerson and Ivan. So I know I just have to continue pushing and just seeing what I can do. So here we are coming up to the center hairpin. As you can see, Mike Gonzalez is gonna look for a move. I'm gonna defend on the inside, force him up on that curb, and he's gonna look to make it stick, but I have the inside on Silk. He actually lets me through because he made a little bit of contact there. So total respect for him for doing that. It's obviously none of us want to get a penalty. As you can see, got a few more carts catching up to me. So this is definitely far from over. So again, I'm just making sure I'm on the inside for Horseshoe. Therefore I can defend. He's gonna look for a move here. He's gonna pull out of it again as I just come to the apex at the last second. As you can see, because I go wheel to wheel a little bit, I start to pull away. So the good news at this point is I'm pretty much solidly holding on to P3. So I know that if I can hold on to P3, I'll be extremely happy. So there's the white flag, meaning last lap. As you can see, it's now getting decently dark out and I know this is my chance. So Emerson and I are gonna start to go wheel to wheel. So the gap that they've pulled is gone. I'm now right on him. So I know I have to make the move stick and for me, I'm most confident passing at Long Beach. It's the hardest braking zone on this track and my strength is on the brake. So I know that's where I have to make the move stick. So I'm just gonna let them go wheel to wheel for the remainder of the lap and see if I can find anything. Ivan's gonna make a move on Emerson and boom, he actually makes it stick. Emerson gets a bad exit. So now I'm just looking to get a better run through Silk, hoping to get him down the back straightaway. But this car just doesn't quite have the straight line speed. So I'm just gonna take the slipstream off of Emerson. I know, okay, he's gonna try to make a move on Ivan and I can just swoop by and take a position here. Through Contino we go and here we go, wheel to wheel. Emerson actually starts to pull away. He seems to squat down for DRS. He starts bumping with Ivan. And then here we go through Horseshoe. Now the quicker line through here is on the inside, Emerson's on the outside, boom, I get Emerson. Here's Ivan, he's gonna go defensive. Oh, we make contact. Down the inside, I find a gap, I go for it. Issue here, I don't quite get a good exit as I take a shallow entry, but I don't take a wide exit. As you can see, we're gonna wheel to wheel the line and he's just gonna beat me by six thousandths of a second. So how close is six thousandths? Well, let me show you. So here we are coming up to the line frame by frame and right there. You see my front bumper across the line, his front bumper a little more across the line. If you had to measure that, that's probably two inches or so. I mean, crazy. And Emerson's less than a tenth away as well. So uh, probably one of the closest finishes at Cal Speed ever, but definitely, definitely a good race. And the fact that I was able to come away with P2, very happy with that considering the pace of this cart. And so to start the year with a first place and a second place, that's perfect for challenging for a championship. So super great race, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.